Well, welcome to Dublin on this whirlwind trip. I, I assume you've been here before, though, haven't you? For some of the possibly in the parties back in the day, the Coronation Street crowd used to come over. Oh, that's when you go. This is as soon as you arrive in Dublin, you go. Yeah, this is where. Yeah, we've had some good parties here. Because everyone, when the you know, if there were ever any awards, every year obviously there's the Dublin Awards, and yeah. they were the ones that were like, yes, the wildest, always. Yeah, because no, you know. People, we all flew together as a cast, and people's partners maybe necessarily didn't come. And what <laughs> have you, you know, so like the boys were let free. And what goes can't... on tour stays on tour. Say no more, Vicky. <laughs> um, you're here, of course, talking about singing in the rain. It's going to the Borgash Energy Theatre. All very excited about this. So, what ma- what made you get involved with this project? And have you done musicals before? Because obviously, we know you from Coronation Street mainly. Yeah, it's completely different to anything that I've ever done before, or ever thought that I would do. You know, my agent rang about auditioning for Singing in the Rain, and it was like. But, it, but it's a musical and that's like requires real sort of niche talent to be able to sing and dance yeah. incredibly well. And he said, the parts for Lena Lamont and um, now the film for, you know, Singing in the Rain, yeah. um, the joke about Lena Lamont is that she can't sing for Toffee. <laughs> so it's suddenly like, oh, maybe I could do this. <laughs> so it's a brilliant part. And I'm, I, you know, I went to watch the show in the West End and like I say, I'd never really engaged in musicals and mm. it's just spectacular it's spectacular and it just gives you this amazing feeling in the audience and everyone loved it and when you walk out you just feel thrilled it's a real crowd pleaser and it felt like oh my god if i could even just be part of this it'd be a real (laughs) treat so even you know you're doing the rehearsals and you're like with 30 tap dancers doing extraordinary dancing wow. so already it's been brilliant yeah and, and the character in the movie if I remember correctly does she have a squeaky voice is it kind of an unusual unusual voice or is because they don't she's in she doesn't talk in movies before movies change in them it's the 20s right a squeaky voice what do you mean <laughs> What's your point? The way you were looking at me there for a second, I was going, I've got the wrong movie. She's kind of looking going, squeaky voice? What? That was the squeaky voice I was talking about. What squeaky voice? <laughs> yeah, she's in it, um, the, the, the story starts in the silent movies and they're, they're um, Lena Lamont and Donna, the height of, like at the height of their fame and everything's perfect and they're wonderful silent movie stars. And then it's the talk is coming, it's that transition, which we experience all the time, don't we, in media? It's suddenly like, oh, and then television came along and it kind of, you know, ruined these silent movie stars' careers. I don't know if you've ever seen the film The Artist, but yes, that brilliant. sort of tells a, a similar story in yeah. that suddenly, Everyone has this idea of who these silent movie stars are. And then when they talk... <laughs> Do people tell you to shut up on set after a while, Vicky? Let's go back to Vicky. Stay out of character. Yeah. <laughs> so it's beautiful because it, there's loads of sort of depth in that because then you then get to explore the sort of demise of this character, actually, and say, yeah, when we put people up on a pedestal so high and then they have to have had this fall from grace yeah yeah and, and i believe it rains on stage is it is this true and is this slightly dangerous if you're going to see it and sitting in the front row it actually rains on stage <laughs> and not just the front row oh, oh really like it was quite a, maybe six seven eight rows back there's i don't know how many liters of water but um yeah i heard it's like fourteen thousand or something <laughs> yeah it's, used in the show. it's phenomenal and that's just an idea of the kind of pro- t- production values that are in this show yeah. these huge tanks of water backstage okay. um yeah Oh, we have to talk about Coronation Street, of course, as well. I think it's, it's years since you left now. Do you ever, ever miss it? Because you, you're one of those people who left the show and actually you died. So you, you never have to, you don't have to go back. You never have to have those questions about going back. But uh, do you miss it at all? Do you, do you ever go, oh, I wish they'd kind of written me as I've gone to Spain for a few years <laughs> instead? No, I, you know, it was a treat. To, I'd worked on the show for five years, which was just unbelievable. Cause it's something, again, that you never really think that you're going to do and I got a three month contract on it so to do that for five years felt unbelievable and like you say it was like around that time of wanting to leave that you forever you know think be asked if you're going to go back and actually you just move on but this now you get asked do you wish you could go <laughs> yeah yeah exactly now you get asked you wish you hadn't died so either way but there's things that you he's kind of you know totally different doing, doing theatre because you're really part of a company and it's a small company and you're touring together whereas you know something like Corey you're part of a huge machine yeah. um, a, a fantastic one but mm. th- there are things I miss that are like 
I guess you get institutionalized, don't you? Whenever you work somewhere for sort of a year, you get really used to things, you know, right. like having a car parking space in town and a uh, post out box, <laughs> and, you know. But you have a tough schedule on those shows. I think people don't realize you actually work a lot of hours when you're doing something like that, don't you? Yeah, I mean, they film five episodes a week and normally, you know, that is so full on to do with such big storylines and such huge events going on. So if you've got a big storyline, it you're you're there okay. all the time. And it and it in, you know, it takes over your life in lots of other ways too, even when you're not there. It's obviously such a there's such a focus on it. Okay. That, do you yeah. do you still get people on the street kinda of going, Oi Molly, what's going on? Thought you were supposed to be dead. Am I dreaming? <laughs> Molly, where's Tyrone? Oh, <laughs> Welcome to my world, oh, yeah. <laughs> nightmare. Speaking of Tyrone, though, do you still uh, ha- um, talk to Alan, the actor who played play Tyrone? I haven't spoken to him for a while, actually. But, um, yeah, I'm sort of in touch with, I'm in touch with Fi- um, Jenny a lot, who plays Fizz. And, okay. uh, yeah, some of the guys. But it's just been so busy. It was a real shame that we didn't, Singing in the Rain wasn't in Manchester. I wasn't in it when it was in Manchester. Yeah. That would have been nice. Well, listen, we can't wait to see it on stage. It is, of course, 20th of May to the 31st. I can't wait to see it. I'm not sure they'll sit in the front row or the sixth row. It sounds like you're still going to get wet, (laughs) but maybe in the eighth, but I'll definitely be there. (laughs) (laughs) Great. Thank you so much. Thanks a million. That's great.